You know, we've been uh, studying the book of James. We're going to uh, read from uh, verse 10 onwards. James is pointing out one particular thing. He's saying, you know, if you pick and choose your law, right? You say, this is my favorite thing, and I'll obey it. And, well, this, I'm not so sure. I can gloss over it. Saying, if you pick and choose, and if you break one thing, don't you know that you break the whole law? And then James moves on to address another thing about another topic about faith and works. So he's talking about faith and faith that expresses itself, okay? faith that demonstrates itself in good works. He's talking specifically in this context about charitable works, taking care of people's needs. And he says, faith by itself, if it does not have these kind of works, it is dead. Then he goes on to talk about another thing. Okay, it's about faith. Okay. He's talking about faith in action, but here he's talking about you know, uh, faith and works, and uh, not necessarily about charitable works, but you know, what you need to do because of your faith in the Lord. If you say you believe in Jesus, if you say that you believe in the risen Lord, you believe in the Word of God, what are those actions that need to accompany your belief in Him? What are those things that need to accompany your faith in Jesus? So he's saying, you know, if it does not accompany those actions, or if actions do not accompany, you know, your faith, then that faith is dead. Faith without works is dead. So we are challenged today to, to walk out our faith in practical ways, to demonstrate our faith in practical ways. So let's look at chapter 3. Chapter 3, book of James, um, verse 1 onwards. Let not many of you become teachers. He's warning um, you know, those who, are, who claim to be teachers, who, who want to be teachers. Um, it is definitely an honor to teach the Word of God, yes or no. Yeah, and it's an overwhelming thing, uh, daunting thing to teach the Word of God, to preach the Word of God, because you know that you're handling the truth and it's it going to cut you both ways. The Lord Jesus says in Matthew 5 and verse 19, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So what, are he, what is he saying? He's saying that the Lord is saying, first you do, you apply it, you obey, and then you teach. And, and then he says that we all stumble in many things, but if someone does not stumble in word, then he's a mature man. Praise God. So there seems to be a connection between our thinking, our speaking, our actions. It's all interconnected and it's connected to the words that we speak. So he's saying, you know, if you do not stumble, if anyone does not stumble in word, then this person is perfect, able to bridle the whole body. Just like how there's a bit or a bridle that is put in a, in a horse and he goes on to talk about it in the next few verses. So he's explaining the power of the tongue, you know, the, he's comparing the tongue to a bit in a horse's mouth. He's comparing the tongue to a rudder in a ship. And he's also saying the tongue is, you know, like a forest fire. Okay, so a bit in the horse's mouth and a rudder in a ship. So what do they do? He's saying, your tongue is like this. Of course, he's talking about the words that we speak things that we speak. Um, so he's saying it's like uh, a rudder. It controls, it directs. Our words can be so powerful. If we would speak edifying words, if we, we would speak blessing, if we would communicate with grace and regard, but the opposite is true. The opposite is true. We will speak edification. There will be an impartation of grace. Let's look at verse 7 onwards, 7 to 12. So he's warning us again about the influence of the words that we speak. He says that you know, it is unruly evil. It cannot be tamed. Well, if it is an evil tongue, if our mind is unrenewed, 
if our flesh is not crucified, if you're not giving in to the leading of the Holy Spirit, definitely, you know, our, mind, our tongue cannot be tamed. So therefore, you know, your word, your, your tongue is meant to speak edifying words. And God will help us to speak um, words that are edifying, to speak blessing, if we would just yield to Him. If we would yield our senses, if we would, you know, as slaves of righteousness, as Romans declares, that we would stand before Him as slaves of righteousness and our senses will be so saturated with the truth of God's Word, will be so influenced by God's Word that when we speak, you know, we will speak edifying words, we will speak blessing.